హలో ఫ్రెండ్స్ వెల్కమ్ టు సుధాస్ లైఫ్ ఛానల్ నిన్న మస్కెట్లో అంటే ఇరవై ఐదో తారీఖుని సద్గురువు గారిది సేవ్ సాయిల్ అనే ప్రోగ్రాం క్యాంపెయిన్ జరిగిందండి ఒమాన్లోని ఒమాన్ ఎగ్జిబిషన్ అండ్ కన్వెన్షన్ సెంటర్లో జరిగింది చాలా బాగా జరిగింది ప్రోగ్రాం అయితే ఆ విషయాలు మీతో షేర్ చేసుకుందాం చెప్పి నేను ఈ వీడియో చేశాను వీడియో మీరు స్కిప్ చేయకుండా చివరి వరకు చూడండి ఛానల్ సబ్స్క్రైబ్ చేయండి ఓకే సద్గురువు గారిని ప్రత్యక్షంగా చూసే అవకాశం కలిగినందుకు నాకు చాలా హ్యాపీగా ఉందండి మీరు ఈ వీడియోని చివరి వరకు తప్పనిసరిగా చూడండి ఫ్రెండ్స్ థ్యాంక్ యూ సో మచ్ because i was so busy with whatever i was doing it never occurred that it took years break and i sat on it and i realized i had not lost a day and since then i've been traveling all over both in united states and india only on motorcycle <laughs> and uh, pandemic the pandemic situations came in handy that everybody said you must keep social distance then i realized riding a motorcycle fast enough is the best way to keep social distance from everybody <laughs> so the two years of pandemic mostly i was on the motorcycle which kind of prepared me for this journey people are today i'm giving you 66% discount only 34 days hello can you give the message up If you pay attention to a leaf, not many leaves in your country, 
if you pay attention to insect, if you pay attention to an ant, if you pay attention to anything in creation, it can engage you for a whole lifetime. That's how intricate and sophisticated everything is. But everybody is busy with what's nothing in my head, I'm empty up there. So I live on this planet. I lived on this planet for six and a half decades. And because I don't know nothing, I paid attention. Yes, this started happening to me. This microphone is gone now. This started happening to me when I was four and a half years of age. I just realized I don't know anything. Don't know anything means don't know anything at all. If somebody gave me a glass of water, I'm just staring at this water because I don't know what water is. I know how to use it, but I don't know what it is. Even you today, you do not know what it is. Hello? <laughs> you know how to use it, but do you know what water is really? It is the only substance available in all the three different states. And uh, if you want to look for life, we look for a drop of water. But we don't know what it is. With all the scientific research and knowledge we have, we still do not know one atom in its entirety. We know how to break it, we know how to fuse it, we know how to destroy things, but we do not know what it is. So I started staring at things, water means I'll stare at water. If I find a leaf, I'm just staring at the leaf for hours on it. If I sit up in my bed, I'm staring at the dark about that. <laughs> because at this stage in my life, attempting something like this, I need evaluation. <laughs> so he started thinking, I need psychiatric evaluation. This boy is simply staring at something. He's lost it. My problem is, I look at this one, I don't know what it is. I'm not able to shift my attention to this one. I'm just looking at this because still I don't know what it is. In this condition, they send me to school. My mother said, don't look here and there, pay attention to the teacher. I went and paid attention to the teacher. <laughs> the kind of attention that they would have never received in their lives. Looking at them, they started talking something. Initially, I sort of understood what they were trying to say. Then I realized they're just making sounds. I'm making the meaning. See, right now I'm speaking English language. Language is a conspiracy between two people. If I'm among you, woman is, if you want to say something among yourself that you don't want me to know, you will go into a language. <laughs> it's a conspiracy. <laughs> So right now, if I utter one sound, you make up the meaning, this <laughs> And uh, I saw her only after she's hundred years of age. A month or forty days or forty-five days, one rollicking place, crazy. But in the evenings, my great-grandmother is the star because she has a way of telling stories. And she will start the story, there is one beautiful princess. Hello, somebody can enact it, hey? Can you enact it? <laughs> so she starts combing her hair. Her hair is so long. Like this, like this, like this, it'll go. In between there are so many stories. Before the comb reaches the end of her hair, our vacation will be over. <laughs> we say, tell us the school, tell us the club, and she says, now come next time. <laughs> Say, you are hundred years old plus, you will be dead by the time we come. <laughs> they say, no, no, you come, I will complete the story. <laughs> like this story is gone. And I saw her in various kinds of states. She would be ecstatic. Her hair was like up to her knees and she would be dancing crazy. Tears dripping, you know, dripping down her eyes, laughing, crying at the same time and just dancing. Everybody <laughs> in the town said, this is a devil of a woman because she dances, she cries, she laughs and mainly because she laughs. Those days women were not supposed to laugh loudly. I pity, not the ladies, I pity the men. How did they live with women who cannot laugh? <laughs> How do you go back to your home where there is no laughter? <laughs> 
So, but this woman laughs means the whole street will shake, like that she will laugh. So, look, hearing her laughter, they said she's a devil of a woman. And uh, at the age of sixty-eight, after a few years after her husband passed away, she… it's a very wealthy agricultural family, so she went and built a temple for herself. Not for any god, she went and sat there. And uh, people come there to meet her and uh, yeah, you know, stream of people coming there to meet her all the time. I don't know what she was doing, I was too young to know that. But people came, they came out with tears in their eyes all the time, all that kind of stuff anyway. But what really struck me about her was, in the mornings when breakfast was served to her, and during the vacation she would come and stay with us, if breakfast is served, nearly fifty to sixty percent of her breakfast, she would give it to the ants, sparrows, squirrels, all this, she would go about feeding. There are self-appointed advisors who say, you old woman, you don't eat properly, you will die. They all died. <laughs> she didn't. <laughs> and if the ants are eating this food, she would be sitting there with a big smile and tears dripping down her eyes. I thought, why is she so emotional about the ants? And I'm like four or five years of age, I go ch 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 Because for me, ants get on to me and <laughs> you know, probably you've not had this experience for a long time, you must try it, go stand on an ant. <laughs> their home, their apartment home, boom, once they come up your legs, oh, it's an experience <laughs> So I… I'm stamping all these ants, she won't stop me, but she feeds them and she cries. I ask, what the hell are you doing here, crying like this for these ants? She would just laugh. <laughs> One day he wanted to eat apples oh. and he started looking here and there and then he found the right tree. What tree was it? Apple, apple tree. He found the apple tree. But out of sheer habit, he started digging for apples in the ground. <laughs> and after some digging, when he found no apples, he became furious and dug furiously. Slowly the tree came down upon him. <laughs> this is the story of humanity right now. Yeah. It is in pursuit of human happiness and well-being, this damage has happened. This is not because there is one evil force sitting somewhere and wanting to destroy this planet, there is no such thing. It is in pursuit of happiness and well-being of all of us that we have caused this level of damage where we are talking about soil extinction. Extinction means we normally thought dinosaurs and dodos. No, we are talking about soil. What does soil mean? See, today, unfortunately, in the last two and a half years, I have insects on the planet die today. In four to six years' time, all life on this planet will end, including you and me. If all the worms on the planet die today, in the next two and a half to four years, all life on this planet will end, including you and me. If all the microbes die right now, all of us die right now because they are sixty percent of our physical self. But what has happened in the world is like this. In the last seventy years, sixty-seven percent of vertebrate life on the planet has disappeared. Eighty-two percent of the biomass insects have disappeared. Ninety-two percent of inland aquatic life has disappeared. The ocean life, how much it's disappeared, there's no proper measure, but that is also quite substantial because we need to understand they, all of them, microbes, Insects, worms, birds, animals, trees, everybody can survive without us, but we cannot survive without them. We cannot survive without them. 
So when we talk about soil, the simple thing that I'm asking all the governments is just to make simple policies, incentive-based because farm economy around the world is so fragile. So fragile means in the last twenty-five years, over half a million farmers have committed suicide across the, across the world. People think this is just only in India, no. In United States, there have been situations where whole families have shot themselves. Because in the last twelve years, fifty percent of the American farmers have not seen a single dollar of profit. Last two days I have been sitting with the farm representatives in Davos. The distress level that they're talking about is unbelievable in an affluent country like United States. Because this is not one nation's problem, this is a global problem. Because not a single nation, not a single nation in the end touch is 1.48. When the prescription is to call soil as soil, it must have three percent minimum organic content. 1.48 is the highest average we have in Northern Europe. Southern Euro Europe has 1.1 to 1.2 percent. The United States has 1.25 percent. Africa has 0.3 percent. India has 0.68 percent. 62 percent of India's land has been considered as degraded in the last forty years' time. But for over twelve thousand years, Southern India has the history of twelve thousand years of farming. Twelve thousand years we manage the soil well. In forty to forty-five years, we, have, we are turning it into a desert. This is the ingenious nature of… I grew up around Kaveri River. What it was fifty years ago, today only forty percent of the river is left. That is what we are doing to nature around us. That is what we are doing to the fundamentals of our survival. So when I wrote this… when we wrote this river policy, I decided to get the support of people. So I drove from the southern trip of India to Himalayas. In twenty-nine days, we got the support of one hundred and sixty-two million people. <laughs> because of this number, because of this number, when we presented this to the central government, within three and a half months it became the official recommended policy for all the twenty-eight states. And six states went for it proactively, others, you know, they wait for a disaster. People need a disaster to act. Certain number of people should die, something terrible should happen, then only… Because as I said, I have read so much about this ancient Indian Ocean maritime relationship between India and this region. That's one thing that excited me to come here. And